I'm Bayard Powell, Section Chief of Hematology and Oncology and Director of the Leukemia Service at Wake Forest Baptist Health. There are four major types of leukemia. You divide them into two groups, the acute leukemias, acute myeloid leukemia, which is more common in adults, and acute lymphocytic leukemia, which is more common in children, and then the chronic leukemias, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, disease largely of older patients, and chronic myeloid leukemia, which is more common in older patients but can involve all ages of patients. Among the four types of leukemia, um, very different. The acute leukemias come on very rapidly in patients and progress very rapidly and patients will frequently die of complications uh, if you don't treat them aggressively and rapidly. Chronic leukemias, by their definition, are a more chronic, indolent process, come on more slowly, you have a little more time to make a diagnosis, and many patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia, for example, uh, don't even require treatment initially. The chronic myeloid leukemias, patients live many, many years and the death rate's quite low. There are about 40,000 new cases of leukemia overall in the United States, the more common ones being chronic lymphocytic leukemia and acute myeloid leukemia. And the treatment for all leukemia really is some type of chemotherapy. Radiation therapy, surgery have very little role in leukemia. It really is a chemotherapy treated disease. I'll divide the treatment options into each disease group. I'll start initially with chronic lymphocytic leukemia, which is the most common leukemia of adults. Disease of older patients depends on the stage of disease. Many patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia live with their disease and don't require treatment. About a 20% of patients require treatment up front because they have more aggressive disease and it's based on the number of white blood cells you have, how large your lymph nodes are, whether your liver or spleen are enlarged, and what your blood counts are. Um, the patients who require treatment largely is chemotherapy. It's mostly outpatient chemotherapy and these patients are usually not even in the hospital. Chronic myeloid leukemia has been one of the biggest areas of progress in my lifetime uh, with the tyrosine kinase inhibitors or MATNIP has come about in the last 15 years and really has turned us to the, from a disease where the average survival is four to six years to a group of patients in whom we don't know what the average survival is. It's still going at greater than 10 years. And the death rate from their leukemia in people with chronic myeloid leukemia is now less than 5%. The acute myeloid leukemias, which are ones that are most common in adults, require people to be in the hospital an average of four to six weeks, get in a combination of IV chemotherapies. You give a week of chemotherapy, you wait a week for it to have its effect, you do a bone marrow and see if it's all gone. If not, they get a second course. Once they're in remission, you give them some follow-up or booster treatments, and depending on some prognostic or predictive factors of their long-term outcome, you may, that may involve further chemotherapy over about six months, or it may involve things such as a blood or, or uh, marrow transplant. Acute lymphocytic leukemia, more common in children and more curable, but still occurs in adults, makes up about 20% of acute leukemias. And for the acute lymphocytic leukemia, once in again, it's chemotherapy combinations. You get ongoing treatment, and in acute lymphocytic leukemia, that treatment goes for two to three years. The advantage of being treated at comprehensive cancer center uh, are many. First of all, you're getting the latest treatment. You're getting the most up-to-date treatment. You're on the cutting edge of therapy. But frequently, we have clinical trials, and those clinical trials are asking new questions. Even in acute, in acute leukemia, where we do very well, we still have room for a lot of improvement. So we're asking new questions, especially predictors of outcome. So we know which patients need to go to transplant early, which patients are at high risk of relapse, so we need to be very aggressive in treatment, which patients have a lower risk of relapse, and we can uh, be more cautious with our therapy. We have clinical trials in all the major leukemias, and those trials help us move forward offer new options for patients, and especially in any patient who doesn't have a good outcome from their first treatment, the clinical trials we here have here look at follow-up treatments and how best to come up with new drugs or new agents to attack their cancer.